Hi, my name is McKenna, and I'm going to discuss the article, Pay What You Want, Identity, and Self-Signaling in Markets. So, if I gave you the option to purchase a good and you could pay whatever price you wanted, you could pay as much as you wanted, or you could take it for free, what would you do in that situation? This article looks at how people behave in unselfish markets. The study is important because it helps us understand markets and pricing schemes. It helps us better understand consumer utility as well as the influence and importance of self-image in consumer decision making. The hypothesis for this research is looking at self-image and identity and how it plays an important role in individuals' payment decisions under pay-what-you-want pricing scheme. So five studies have been done that relate to this current study. In these studies, it was found that identity influences utility function, utility decreases if our behavior does not align with our identity, and utility increases by our choices that confirm our, confirm our identity. Individuals derive utility from pro-social behavior as a sig signaling mechanism to others on what their judgment should be of them. Pro-social behavior also increases the likelihood that others in oneself will have a positive judgment of that person who engages in the pro-social behavior. A study was conducted where it found that extrinsic monetary incentives were more effective in increasing charity donations in private settings than in public settings. And a final study was conducted where people prefer to avoid situations that could negatively impact their self-image. They'd rather completely avoid this situation rather than harm or um, have a negative impact on their self-image. In this, in this experiment, people preferred to lose $1 than to lose a positive self-image. This current paper adds to the current literature by applying the models that were identified by these other researchers in order to observe consumer behavior. This current study did three field experiments to look at how consumer behavior exists in the markets. The first experiment was the theme park experiment, the second is the tour boat experiment, and the third is the restaurant experiment. Experiment. So participants rode a roller coaster like ride and someone took a picture of them while they were on the ride. When they got off the ride, they could choose to purchase the photo or not. There were two treatments and the first one was the participants could purchase using a traditional pay what you want scheme where they got off and they could pay whatever price they wanted for the photo. In the second option, it was pay what you want plus charity, where half of the money they paid went to charity and they were aware of this. In the results, they found that the average or the amount purchased was more in the pay what you want traditional with 8.39% compared to only 4.5% of the people purchasing when it was pay what you want plus charity. It also showed that in the average paid, they paid about five times more when it was pay what you want plus charity compared to pay what you want traditional. Further, they did a sec another treatment where um, the rest of the customers could see how much the person was paying for the photo. Um, surprisingly, in their results, they saw that this had no effect on how much they paid, that people were not changing their behavior based on other people seeing how much they were paying. In the next experiment, it was a tour boat experiment where participants got on the boat and someone took a photo of them. The photographer then hung up the pictures on the boat and people could walk around and see their photos and then they could decide whether they wanted to purchase the photo or not. Um, the regular standard price was $15 for each photo. In this experiment though, they manipulated it so that one treatment was they could buy it for $15, another treatment where they could purchase it for $5, and the third which was pay what you want. From the study, they found that more people purchased the photo when it was $5 rather than $15. So in the results of the study, they found that more people purchased the photo when it was priced at $5 compared to $15, and they weren't surprised by these results. They also found that more people purchased it when it was $5 than pay what you want, which is surprising because and pay what you want, people could have paid $5, yet they just avoided the situation and didn't purchase it at all. In terms of profitability, the $15 treatment resulted in $3.45 profit per photo taken. In comparison, the pay what you want averaged $6.43, meaning that they got more profit from pay what you want per photo. So people were paying more 
because they valued the photo and didn't want to hurt their self image. And the profit for the $5 photo was the lowest at $3.20 per photo. In the third experiment, they went to a restaurant where participants could pay what you want for a buffet style meal. In the study, there were two treatments. In the first treatment, there was an envelope given and it was the person paid the amount they wanted in the envelope and then gave it to the cashier. In the second treatment, the person took the envelope and there was 20 euro in the envelope that they could take as change depending on how much they wanted to pay. In this case, it was completely anonymous where the money was put into the envelope and they didn't know how much was given. Results of the restaurant experiment, they found that when participants knew how much others were paying, it had no influence on the amount they paid for their meal. However, when they didn't know how much others paid, they ended up paying more on average for their meal. This shows that people try to pay a fair price to enhance their self-image. So the results from the three experiments support the hypothesis that self-image and identity play an important role in payment decisions under pay what you want. These results also support the current literature that people value their identity and people tend to pay more under pay what you want. This was shown in the study where um, the average price for pay what you want was more than the fixed price. It also supports that individuals value their identity and make choices as a self-signaling mechanism other than, rather than a signal, signaling mechanism to other people as far as how their identity is and how they react. It also supports that pro-social behavior increases the likelihood of having a positive self-image by the results of people paying more under pay what you want or not purchasing the item at all. They'd rather just avoid the situation or um, pay more under those situations. However, it does not support that people use pro-social behavior to signal to others as shown by the results that people's behavior were not influenced by other people seeing how much they were paying or knowing how much others paid for a good. It does not support that charity donations may be more effective in private settings than in public settings because the data shows that people are concerned and behave according to their self-image rather than what others think of them. Lastly, it supports that people avoid situations that could negatively impact their self-image. The results show that, people, that less people purchase under pay what you want compared to when there is a fixed price. The study shows that pay what you want can be a profitable mechanism as people pay more on average under pay what you want because people are more likely to purchase if the price is fixed. The study shows that pay what you want can be a profitable mechanism as people tend to pay more on average under this pay what you want mechanism. But more people will likely purchase the product if there is a fixed price because they avoid situations where there's risk of hurting their identity by paying too little. It also shows that people understand that a product has a value and they want to make sure they pay enough for that product. Companies can use this mechanism when creating their pricing. Um, they can focus on creating valuable products that people will want to pay for. This has shown that this mechanism is profitable as people tend to pay more. It also can be used in limited time offers because people will likely use um, will likely pay more if it's pay what you want, knowing that it's, they only can get it for a certain amount of time and it's under, they get to decide how much to pay and they'll likely pay more for it. People do not want to violate their norms, so companies run the risk or the fear that their products will be undervalued if they follow this pay what you want mechanism. However, this shows in the study that people don't want to violate their norms and they understand that the product has a value and they want to make sure they pay enough and not pay too little because they don't want to hurt their own self-identity and their own self-image. However, we do think that this study has some limitations. In all of the experiments, with it being the theme park, the tour boat, and the restaurant, these were more novel experiences where people, we think people were more likely to pay for something or pay more for a good because they were doing something that they don't do in their day-to-day -day life. Um, the study could be looked at further by doing more day-to-day 
activities and also doing experiments where it's not group focused because we think that all of these experiments um, tend to be centered on groups doing activities together which could influence how people behave. Um, overall, we hope that you learned about pay what you want from this study and from this article and that you consider using pay what you want because it is a prof profitable mechanism.